The, thank you. You may be seated. On the cover of your teaching syllabus here, you have someone drawing a curtain. And behind the curtain is the world. And, 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 and the Holy Spirit can draw the curtain. And you can know and you can see what's going on in our world. And all the people said? Amen. Amen. We are delighted to talk about prophecy. I have been a student of prophecy for over half a century. And we're studying uh, at this moment how ordinary men predict the future. Uh, it, it is so easy for us to think that a person has to be a superhuman creature in order you know, to predict the future. The only thing that we seek for is validity and, the, and, and sincerity and absolute truth. You know, if a person is going to predict the future, it has to come to pass. <laughs> You know, it cannot be opposite of that, uh, then they are a false prophet. The Holy Spirit does not tell lies. And so when we see uh, something, uh, you know, that uh, coming to pass and that's been prophesied, then we know that person is a prophet. So all that we desire is that we do the thing right. And we know that ordinary persons like us can be used of God. The, five, the fivefold ministry of the New Testament is apostles who are over all the total ministry, and then the prophets, which is lesser than the apostle, and then, and, and then we come to an evangelist, a teacher, and a pastor. Those are the three God-given, the five God-given ministries into the body of Christ. And so we're discussing one of them, how ordinary men receive the power and the foreknowledge to tell you what is going to come to pass. Uh, we are beginning our lesson today on page 20. We have uh, had one uh, session on this, showing you how ordinary men uh, uh, prophesy. And we, we showed you how Enoch prophesied, how Noah was a person that prophesied, and that he said a flood was coming, and it did come according to his word. And then we have come to a very great person. His name is Abraham. And Abraham, through the anointing of God, proclaimed that through him and his seed there would come a Messiah. Now that's about as big as you can get in the world of prophecy, you know. In Genesis 12 and 2, I will, I will make of thee a great nation, and he told people that. And I will bless thee, and he told people that. And I will make your name great, and he told that. Can you imagine one Bedouin talking to another and says, my name is going to be great? And he was living in a tent made of, made of goat skins, and, and, and yet today... They, I suppose the most popular name on the face of the earth is that of Abraham. Uh, he, is, he is loved by the Jews, he is loved by the Christians, he's loved by the Muslims, and has millions of other friends beside those three great religions. No other person cross cultures like Abraham does to be appreciated by human persons on the face of this earth. Uh, when God said, your name should be great, he hit it right on the head there. And thou shalt be a blessing, and I will bless them that bless you, and I'll curse him that curseth you, and in you shall all families of the earth be blessed. What a prophecy. <laughs> For him to go around telling people, say, look, look on me here. Through me, all the nations on the earth are going to be blessed through me. That, that's pretty big, you know. And he, he went around telling people that. And today we see that it is true. His seed has been scattered all over the face of this earth. One of his sons, uh, named Moses, wrote the first five books of the Bible. That's blessed people all over the face of this earth. And so we see that that has literally come to pass, a prophecy that flowed through his lips. And then he says, And, and, and Jehovah appeared unto Abram and said unto the, Your seed will I give this land. Now, if, if God says you can have the land, it doesn't matter what, who, who else has something to say. God has already said it. And if God says it, it'll come true. If God says it, it will come true. He says, I, I will give you this land. And, and there builded he an altar unto Jehovah who had appeared unto him. So Abraham uh, was a great prophet of God. He prophesied the future. And, and he spoke with great courage and he spoke with great power because God had spoken to him. An ordinary man living in Ur of the Chaldees, the Bible says his, his parents were idol worshipers. His parents were idol worshipers, the Bible says. And he stepped out away from that and became another person. He walked with God. He lived for God. 
And he spoke the words of God and what he said came to pass. And the next one that we have in line here that's, that was a, an ordinary person, you might say subordinary. <laughs> now, he, he had a descendant hanging over his head uh, the day he was born. His name, his name was Moses. And Deuteronomy 18, verse 17, it says, And the Lord said unto me, uh, they, they have well spoken that which they have spoken. I will raise them up, a Pharaoh, a, a prophet, from among their brethren, like unto you, and I will put my words in his mouth, and he will speak unto them all that I have commanded him. Uh, this was a great prophecy in that God told Abraham, I mean told Moses, that there would be another prophet similar to himself, only much greater th than himself, and that God, God would put his words into that person's mouth. Now that was a prophecy of the Lord Jesus Christ coming. So we had a, a man that was in the little bull rushes, you know, floating on a basket and, and was found by a princess that took him into the palace and let him stay there until God spoke to him and said, you're not an Egyptian, get out of here. And he went into the desert and stayed there and talked with God and came back and delivered, delivered the people of God from their, from their bondage. And, and God spoke through him and said, I will send another one just like yourself. And, and he will set the people free. Verse 22 says, uh, When a prophet speaketh in the name of the Lord, if the thing follow not, nor come to pass, that is a thing which the Lord hath not spoken. But the prophet, the prophet hath spoken it presumptuously. Thou shalt not be afraid of him. And so right, right in the word of the Lord here, it told us about people that speak of the future and it don't come to pass. Now we have a lot of people in our land today that are speaking a lot of nonsense. And, and they're, they're speaking in what we call generalities. They're not specific, you know. You, know uh, you like these fortune tellers, they, they, you know, they, they could speak so in, in generalities it includes everybody. These people that study the stars and, and want you to live by the stars and they print a little thing for your date. Well, remember another million people had the same day. And it, they're not just talking to you, they're selling that to a million people. So don't be stupid. And, and think you're getting something personal and it is so general that you could fall down and stump your toe and it would all be included, you see. And, and so some people are being directed by lies and, and I refuse to. I, I refuse to. I never read in a newspaper or anywhere else what they've got to say about the stars because the stars are made up of, of, of dust and, 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 and dirt and, and minerals and and not made up of anything that's alive. How can dust and minerals know your future? They don't know anything about them at all, but Jesus, the great prophet, knows all about it. So I put my trust in the one that knows it. Can you say amen? amen. So ordinary people is what we want you to know. There's David. The Bible calls him a prophet even in the New Testament. It speaks of him being a prophet. And there is, is, is Daniel, one of the great prophets of, 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 of all history. And Daniel 2 and 23 says, And I thank you and praise you, O Lord God of my Father, who has given me wisdom and might, and has made known unto me now what we desired of thee. For thou hast, hast now made known unto the, unto the king's manner. So Daniel prepared in the presence of the king, answered in the presence of the king, the secret which the king had demanded came, cannot the wise men, the astrologers, the magicians, and the soothsayers show unto the king. But there is a God in heaven that revealeth secrets and maketh known to the king, Nebuchadnezzar, what shall be in the latter days. Say latter days. Because they're coming to pass it, even at this very hour. Even at this very hour. Your dream and the vision of, of your head upon your bed are these. And so Daniel began to show him the great empires, the world empires. And he said, you're the first empire. Then he gave all the empires until this very moment. Now that kind of prophecy is, is so amazing and remarkable. But remember these ordinary men, that's what this lesson's about. Sometimes we say, well, he is so super spiritual, I can never be like him. That's where the devil cheats us out of situations. Uh, God uses ordinary people to do extraordinary things. And if you can seek God and walk with God and talk with God, He can make known unto us these things. But now if you study 
1 Corinthians chapter 12, where it gives you the names of the gifts of the Spirit, and then chapter 13 that shows you how they function and us caring one for another, and love, and God is love. In chapter 14, where he says, if a prophet prophesies, let the others judge him. But the prophets of today don't want to be judged. They say, when I speak, it's God talking. Now, just a moment. Uh, it's either God or you, uh, one or the other, but we've got to find out which one it is. And, and so the Bible says that even when a person that thinks he's a prophet speaks, the Bible says, let the other let the others judge whether that be of God or not. And so we have some regulation uh, to this thing to where we know what is good and that which is not good. Anytime you have something good, you've always got an imitation. You, you, you have something good and there's an imitation for it. The devil always wants to build a counterfeit, you know, a counterfeit around some, something that's good. And so we have to be careful that we don't get stuck in a counterfeit when God wants us to know the true thing. And all the people said, Amen. so Daniel was one of the great master prophets that God showed him the entire Gentile world entire, and also the Jewish world uh, from his dreams and visions that God gave unto him. And yet uh, Daniel was a slave. He was an Israelite living in a foreign country. He lisped as he spoke another foreign la language. And, and, uh, and so he wasn't cradled in luxury. He was a slave. When he was drugged by, by irons across the desert from, from the land of, of Judah over into the land of Babylon. And he rose up through the ranks, not only in the way of the kingdom, but in God also. You know, sometimes if we have a hard trouble, we, uh, a hard time, we, we forget, forget God and prosperity and everything. Uh, every morning we ought to start over again. You know? I told you for years, God said, win a million souls to me. And somebody said, well, how many have you won? Well, I said, that's not the problem. I start over new every morning. You see, if I start over new every morning, I got a lot to win that day. So I just work on them all I can and see how many I can win uh, that day. And, and so if we will every day forget the past, walk in the present, and, and say, I'm going to do the best I can today, then the problems of the past don't get to us. You see, the problems of the past don't get to us. But if you're going to be defeated by the past, then you can't do much with the present. And of course, you don't even have any future. It's all finished. And so what we have to do every day is to make a new start with God and a new start with blessing and a new start with holiness. And with a new start, you get a new spirit inside. And all the people said, and so David was a prophet, an ordinary shepherd boy. Daniel was a prophet. He was a slave. I don't know that he was ever emancipated. I suppose he died a slave. And then Ezekiel was a, an amazing prophet in that he prophesied the destiny of Russia and, and, and those other nations that are north of Jerusalem. He prophesied their end time. At the time he said that, there was no great nation above Israel into the far north. In fact, Russia is the first nation in history that from that far north that has been a great nation. And here this man Ezekiel told us about it so many, so many years ago. And that has now come to pass in our times. And so here is a man, a regular man, just like you're a man, and God spoke to him. God spoke to him. I don't think God can speak to us if we get too involved in what you call secular situations. If, we, you're, if you're going to be completely bound by the secular, then, then, then God is not able to, to do for you and talk to you as He wants you. There has to be times of seeking the Lord. There has to be times of praying. There has to be times of singing. There has to be times of worship. And without these, you see, Daniel showed you how he worshiped three times a day. He opened his window toward Jerusalem out of his house there in Babylon. He prayed with all of his heart, prayed so loud the neighbors heard it, and made them all mad that he was a man of prayer. And because of that, got thrown in the den of lions. Only God brought him back out again. How I many of God brought out of a den of lions to see your hand? Yeah. When the devil gets you caged in, God brings you out. And, and then made a fool of, you know, the devil, the devil never wins. We, we are the winners. Then in number nine here, you have Malachi. 
and he was a prophet of God. He says, For the day cometh that thou shalt burn as an oven, and all the proud, yea, and all they that do wickedly shall be stubble, and the day that cometh shall, shall burn them up, saith the Jehovah of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. See, that is still yet to come. That prophecy is yet to come. But unto you that fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings, and, and, and we and, and ye shall go forth and grow up as calves in the stall, well fed. Uh, behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And he shall turn the hearts of the fathers to the children, and the hearts of the children of their parents, fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. And so here was a man who was the last Old Testament prophet, and, and he is telling you these things that are coming to pass in our times and even further out beyond our own times here, a prophet of God. Ordinary men speaking by the power, the anointing of the Holy Ghost, tell us things unborn, haven't gotten started yet, and they, they, they prophesied of them. Then we jump from the, what we call the Old Testament, I don't know why we do that, into what we call the New Testament. It's all the Word of God, and so we don't have to jump from one to the other, new and old. But we, we go into what we call the New Testament, and here was Paul. In 2 Timothy 3 and 1, he says this, Know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. Now he is speaking of our times, these last days. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. And you, we have never had a time in history that is like this time that we live in this very moment. And they should be covetous. They should be boasters. They should be proud. They should be blasphemers. It's very sad today that very people can't talk without cursing. They're women that can't talk without cursing, you see. They're the writers that can't write without blaspheming, you know. And they're entertainers that, that get very angry because they can't curse while they're trying to entertain people, uh, you see. Uh, they're full of the devil, full of evil, full of sin. It just, it, their hearts are so nasty and filthy, it rolls out their mouth, you see. And they don't know what's wrong with them. They don't know what's wrong with them. Th th there is a spirit of blasphemy. Maybe you've never realized that. But there's a spirit of blasphemy where you blaspheme all the time. And I, I have found these people. A man from New York City told me he came here for deliverance. He said he'd been put off of a dozen buses in New York City. That he would be riding along and suddenly blasphemy would come up out of his mouth. And he'd curse so violently, curse so violently and couldn't stop that they... The man would stop the bus and say, get off of here. We can't stand this any longer. And he came here and God set him free. A man came in here from Chicago uh, to one of our meetings and my wife found him down, down at our school sitting on a step. And, and, uh, and he was started down to where we were eating downstairs and, and he was cursing himself with the filthiest language you've ever heard, calling himself bad names and telling him to get on down the steps and eat. He was cursing himself. His, she, she had to stop him, cursing himself. And that man told me before we set him free that sometimes blasphemy came upon him and he had to stick his head down in a toilet and let that stuff come out of him. Says he cursed things. So he says, you have never heard language that came up out of him. A spirit of blasphemy. Don't ever let the devil get a hold of you and cause you to start cursing because you may become possessed with it and can't stop it until God sets you free from blasphemy. There, there, there are literally thousands of people living in our land today have a spirit of blasphemy. Every time they open their mouth, they're cursing, and they don't know why. When they curse Jesus, you can speak to them and say, do you know the one you're cursing about? Did you ever get acquainted with him? Have you ever spoken to him? And, and they become ashamed of themselves that they're blaspheming a name of a person they know nothing about. They don't have any relationship with him at all. And here they are blaspheming his name. The, the, the devil is a bad devil. Can you say amen? amen. And so we, we, we have four or five verses of that. This is on, on page 22. Uh, showing you the great, the great power that this, this person had named Paul. A lot of his writings here in the New Testament are prophetic. They have to do with the future. And we're seeing them now come to pass. You know, that's the remarkable thing. We're observing them uh, coming to pass. All right, it says, uh, 
P Peter was a great prophet of God. And, and uh, he, he said in, in 2 Peter 3 and 3, says, Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days, last days, scoffers. There has never been a time when there were so many scoffers as today. Never been a time. Mocking God, mocking the Bible. You know, it, it is amazing. Walking after their own lusts saying, where is the promise of his coming? For the, since the fa their fathers have fallen, all things uh, continue as they were from the beginning of creation. And they say, well, seeing that things are like they are now, they'll always be this way, which is not true. They will not always be that way. Then John was a great prophet. He saw the whole book of Revelation, and he prophesied this whole thing and brought it to us today. Now, if you have a pencil there, Agabus in the New Testament in Acts 11, 27 and 28, he he prophesied of a famine, and the Word of God says that famine did come to pass. Then you'll also find in Acts 21, 8 and 9, that the four daughters of Philip, the four daughters of Philip, it says they all prophesied. It says they were virgins, and they all are prophesied. A number of ladies in the Bible prophesied. There's Miriam in Exodus 15. There's Deborah in Judges 4. And there is, is Hulda. In 2 Kings 22 and 14, there's Anna in the New Testament, Luke 2 and 26. I lived with a great prophet named Howard Carter. And it was an, an amazing thing how he would say things and they would come to pass. In my meeting him, he was praying in London and the Lord said to him, I have a companion prepared for you. He should come from afar. He will be a stranger when he comes. And these are the precise words that he will say. Eighteen months later, I met him in this country, and without knowing what I was saying, I repeated the precise words that God had given him in London eighteen months before that. And he opened his little black book that was full of prophecies, you see, and, 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 and he says, my whole life has been directed by prophecy, and in England, in England I speak many things of the future that all come to pass. And so when, when he would have a prophecy, uh, of something coming to pass, he would write it down and give it to others. He, he said, I don't want anybody to think that I just thought of this after it came to pass. And so he would write the prophecy and hand it to others. And then when it came to pass, a number of people would know that this is what he had prophesied. Now that's good prophecy, you know, when you're willing to write it down and hand it out and say, I want you to know this is going to come to pass. But our, our main thought in this lesson is to show you how ordinary women, ordinary men receive the spirit and the power of foretelling the future. But it must come from God, not from your mind and not from your feelings inside of you. I feel good, I feel good. But it must come directly from God to the church. Say church. church. Yeah, it's to the church. Prophecy is a spiritual operation. And it, it, it is for the church of Jesus Christ to grow by it, to increase by it, to be blessed by it, to be enriched by it. And so when we have prophecy, we have something that edifies the church and builds up the church and gives people faith, you know, gives people faith that these things can come to pass. I've seen some very strange things. I was in the backside of Tibet, and I was sleeping in a horse inn. The mules were downstairs eating, and I was sleeping in the hayloft right up above them. And two o'clock in the morning, here came a lantern up there, and here were three Chinese. And, and they said, we live three days' journey away, and our church had an argument over doctrine, and God spoke to us and said, if you will go three days' journey directly toward the east, you will find there, you will find there two men from another country, and they will tell you about this. Those, those at church sent about three of their delegates, and they came on horseback three days journey, got to the village, and immediately they said, any foreigners here tonight? And they said, yeah, in that horse inn over there, there's some foreigners. They came over there and, and threw their light on us and said, you have to, you have to sit up and talk. It says, uh, we don't have time for you to sleep. You have to sit up and talk. And they woke us up and told us what we had to do. And Brother Carter spoke to them the truth. Those guys did not wait till daylight. They got back on their mules and went three days' journey back to tell the church. God is a great God. Yeah. Give the Lord a hand, everybody.
Hallelujah. And we're just entering into greater aspects of this. Uh, we, we're getting close now to the full operation of the gifts of the Spirit in the church, in, in the total church. And man, it's great. It is simply great to know that we're going to see a mightier manifesta manifestation of the supernatural than any generation has ever known. You ready for it? <laughs>